Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation this morning goes to Ogun State. And if you had followed us on Friday uh, last week, we had spoken with a representative of the Ogun State governor to clarify on issues, you know, concerning the residents of Ogun State who had uh, started taking refuge in Bene Republic. Uh, the conversation, of course, uh, went on, you know, with him, you know, sharing the government side of the story, uh, saying that the Red Cross narrative wasn't entirely true. And most of those people were not, in, in fact, refugees. They were people who were familiar with, of course, uh, had uh, friends and family in Benet Republic. And so, you know, were always going across, you know, to and fro the border yeah. to, you know, visit every now and then, of course, or maybe even to hide from the, um, the crisis in, the, in those parts of the country. We are joined this morning by uh, the, um, the traditional ruler, His Royal Majesty, Oba Akintunde Akinyemi. Uh, the SLU of Iselu. Uh, good morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so so I'm, I'm going to start with, you know, having you clarify exactly what the situation um, is like in Ogun State. And that is, um, you know, the crisis situation and then those, you know, reports of people having to flee to Bene Republic to seek refuge. Uh, quickly, you know, clarify exactly what it is like. Well, uh, the situation right there mm -hmm. now is that, you know, the primary responsibility of the traditional is to keep government in the known if there are certain issues or a particular information which is vital to the government. You know, presently, we have a lot of our people in the Republic of Benin. I'm reaffirming that. And uh, you see, when the issue of uh, Fulani came on, on board, that particularly in NASA and Bonelere, you know, and uh, the Beku accident, what really happened was that that very day, it happens to be February 14, the Fulani and a lot of them ran to the Republic to seek a cover. And you know, their houses were burned. And up to now that I'm talking to you, the whole lot was there in the Republic of Vietnam. So the funniest part of it was that as at the time the government took actions to put in security, set up uh, a committee, you know, and they brought in some vehicles, joint tax force, already our people are there. Are you with me? Yes, go ahead, please. So, and up to now, a whole lot of them are still there. So, as at the time the Red Cross went to the place, they were communicating with me directly with videos, pictures, evidences, interview with those who are there. And even the mayor of Ikobe, the public company, with some delegation, came to Asa with their police. They came into Asa to do a physical assessment of the place even without informing the authority of Nigeria. So it is true, our people are there. Okay. Um, the, the issue here is the Ogun State government is denying knowledge of this issue. We had a representative last week, Friday, who said, you know, this was fake news and that in fact, they have received no official communication from the, from the government in Benin Republic as to whether there was a refugee crisis in Ogun State or not. So I don't know if you can clarify to us if the government is aware of what's happening in Ogun State. Well, you see, the government is, uh, of the government denied issue, it's just because they don't know. You understand what I'm saying? They don't know. You see, the government cannot be everywhere. But as a traditional ruler, we don't need to inform them about the situation. You see, the, about two days ago that the Red Cross went to the public of Benin, they met with it about the big and he confirmed to them on the last that our people who stood there, even up to now, a lot of them, that the mayor of the Quebec came to that community. They have to create a place for them. And presently, the government of Benin to a, a place for them where they can be staying. You understand? So even the government might not even know. All right. So personally, myself, I didn't know until like two days. 
Initially, I knew they were there, but when the government came for a physical assessment, so I thought they were back. So two days ago, that the Secretary of Red Cross in the state gave me a call that they were going there with some delegation. So I said, okay, I would also like to know the situation over there. So till like two days ago, that they find you. I knew we still have a lot of people. We have a lot of even the woman that get back there. The the I spoke with the woman. The woman I spoke with, and she told me that she then she just gave back to me. So the government. So what they don't know, they will not say they. But so I think the government did not know. They are not their family member. We still have a lot of our people there. It actually sounds very hard to believe that a situation of this magnitude that has even found its way to the media and that we've been talking about since last week, that the government doesn't know about it. But anyway, the, you mentioned that it's your responsibility you know, to take care of your people. Have you in any way communicated to the government so they're aware of the situation? You said the Red Cross sent you pictures and videos. Are there plans to show that to the government so they begin to take action to rescue their people and rehabilitate them? Well, you see, because I wasn't there physically, the Red Cross went there. So I just spoke with them. I told them to do a write up, send pictures, and every evidence they have there, and send it to the government. That was what I told the secretary. You know, because I wasn't there in person. They were there. And they communicated, they communicated with me, and I knew our people are there. And I called, I gave a call to the upper there, the traditional ruler in the and they are something that a lot of people are still there. That even the mayor is putting a structure for them. You know, so I that reaffirmed to me that my people are still there. So I told the Red Cross to send their report and subsequently I will do a letter to and send it to the government. Right, that will still have a lot of our people there. That communicate with the ministry. You know, uh, but who will go around there? Who will go there and bring our people back home? Okay, quite kindly confirm what the security situation is like in those communities as we speak. Um, in order for yeah, and, those and people to return, the governor has deployed the joint task force with the new vehicles, then uh, the bike. So the, the, the security situation there has really improved beyond what we used to do before. Okay, so, so would you say that it is reasonably safe now for residents of Ogun State and Nigerians um, to return back home uh, to their, uh, of course, to their initial place of residence? And do they, you know, from, from the crisis that, you know, erupted in those places, do they even have homes to return to? Well, 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 you see, the only thing there is that, you know, now that this is a new development, now that we are communicating with the government about the new development, we just need a place we can put them temporarily, and the construction for them that the full and nip are burnt down. You know, that's I think that's what we need to do. That that's what we need to employ the government to do for our people now. That people will be by the time will be able to have a temporary place for them, spending the time the government will put up to go back to down. And you, and you can confirm that. You know, the destruction uh, was done by Fulani, as you just mentioned, headsman. Yeah, everybody knows that. Knows that. You know, my, my, my only concern is just for the children, they are, they are out of school, they have, they have, they have put them to education, um, subsequently abuse, and child labor over there in the Republic of Benin. A lot of children were there. You know, so that's why I felt we don't need to bring them back home so we can send them back to school and let them, because that's our future. Okay. Oba um, you're quoted in the newspaper as saying, you know, quote, it's a terrible situation. Nobody is around. They have deserted the houses. They've deserted the schools everywhere. The palliatives are in Tata. We can't pick them because we're still looking for who to give them to. Some residents are even saying they won't come until security is provided. Uh, now, you mentioned that the government has intervened and sent, you know, a, you know, a few vehicles to ensure security. Is this the, still the situation in Ogun State? Well, 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 a lot of people, like the chairman of the committee, uh, he, he has been going around to give uh, the 
citizens of Obo State from Kaki Natura that they can come around, they can bring in their home. It's like we are winning them back home. And it's, at the time the government sent committees, it's complicating. You understand what I'm saying? So we need to move them and tell them to pass home that the government has the provision with maximum security. You know, we need to keep them from starting a current because a drastic problem is a drastic solution. You know, that's the situation now. So some are home, but some are still out there that we need to bring them back home so that everybody can come around. And with the assurance the government is giving us, and with the measures the government has taken, I, I still believe that to some level we have 90, 90 assurance that our people are safe. Okay. Do, do, do the people, and I'm asking this because of incidents from the past, um, do the people themselves, do you believe that they feel safe now to return home? Um, what, ex what peace moves or steps have been taken by yourself, a traditional leader, and uh, also the heads of the Fulani communities in, in Ogun State? What peace moves have been made to ensure that there's never a repeat of uh, incidents like that? Well, you see, that, it's, that's not the primary responsibility of the governor. And I think he has done that. He has given us the assurance as a traditional ruler that there's no problem. He has deployed security and new vehicles. He has even called for And he has given the full armies the a sound warning that what has happened should not come. It, you know, it should not happen again in the good day. And I think with, this, with that coming out from the government, I have some, you know, at least the government has given the concerns that our people can say they can come back home. Okay. So what we just to do now is to employ the government to do a lot in, in giving those abroad some cover and some relief uh, areas that they can come around and stay pending the time that they will have their houses built by, by the government. Okay. Oh, you said pending the time they have the, they will have their houses built by the governor. I mean, has the government said they're going to do that? That they're going to yeah, yeah, build the, the houses? Said, because, yeah, the government, the government says to when he personally came for an assessment that their houses they go put back their houses and he gives uh, the commissioner for housing a standing instruction that they have to put their buildings back. So, uh, so right. they come back to their buildings. As the as the traditional um, leader, you're the Eselu of Eselu. Um, I, I, I want to ask you now: ha, Did you, at any point in this conversation, demand for the arrest of those who committed those crimes, um, in order to ensure that there's never a repeat? Or is there a an understanding that you know th these, those people may not be arrested, and so we we'll just have to? Uh, plead with them for peace. What what exactly, you know, is the situation? Did you demand, as the traditional ruler, did you demand that those people be arrested and prosecuted? Did, did the, the security agencies in Ogun State do you know anything in that you know light? Yeah, yeah. I like if you if you follow my friend about the whole situation, I wrote a letter. I sent it to the government. I sent it to the DSS. I sent it to the army. I sent it to the police that this is in the community and those responsible for this should be arrested and prosecuted. And most of our interviews have been saying that too, that we need to make some arrest. So those those that they will serve as a deterrent to others. I always say that the rule of law must be respected. This is a good state. Our people must be safe. We know us to be a Moloa Bay in Southwest. And this issue of criminality is not something we can even control at all in Nobu State. So okay. I still look forward to do, I still look forward for the police to do their job. They are primary has, has anything like that happened in the past, you know, that you can hold on to as your reason to trust that the police will take um, action this time? Has anybody been arrested um, in the past? Yeah, 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 sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. We we'll make some arrests. You know, I've turned over 15 years and turned over there. And at times when we get some of these criminals, we give them to police. Aside from the fact, yeah, the the, the full army in our area is it's a threat. That's one. Then two, we got an order from the court that they should not come to that place again. 
So seeing them there is content. Okay. Oh, I can't that, that's the situation. Oh, so we have every right to arrest and prosecute them because the court has given an order that they should not come, we should not bring their country to that area anymore. Okay. So um, we're supposed to have the Office of the Red Cross here with us to discuss this matter. Uh, sadly, we don't, but we're happy that you've been working with the Red Cross in Ogun State. So I wanted to ask you to give us some, some figures as to just how many Ogun State residents are seeking refuge in Benin Republic. What's the number according, that we're looking according at? According to the mayor report, because okay. I wasn't there, I don't have the manager, but the, the, the report of the mayor was sent to me by the police over there. And I sent it to the, to, at least to the platform of the chairman of the committee, the, the governor said, oh, which I'm also a member of that committee. According to the mayor, there were less than 5,000. We still have less than 5,000 people there. So that, how that, soon are they expected, or how soon should we expect them to, to come back to Ogun State? Because you mentioned that the, um, the government should be setting up temporary rehabilitation sh shelters for them. So how soon do we expect those shelters to be set up and for them to stay? Also, how soon should we expect their houses to be constructed so we don't have another IDP situation on our hands? Well, it is, it, 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 we're just going to, like, the new development, it happens over the weekend. So now I'm going to write a letter and communicate to the governor that this is the situation there now. So the governor can liaise with the diaspora commission and see how they're going to bring them back home, setting up a shelter for them over here. And over the weekend, too, I spoke with my prime minister, the law of Laro, in respect of this development. And he said, we, we are going to work and inform the government about the situation so we can bring it back. I think we need a couple of days. We, we need to tell the government what to do. They have this development. We are advising, and I'm sure it's going to take a measure to bring them back home. Most especially the children and the women. Okay. Um, about final question from me before we go. Uh, I, I, wanted, I want to know. Um, it, it's not entirely your responsibility, you know, the life to protect lives and property, you know, of uh, residents of Ogun State. That's the, for the government. That's for the governor of the state. But. You know, you, of course, are the traditional ruler. What would you say currently is the level of confidence that the people um, of Iselu have in you? Um, I believe from what you've said, you've done a lot of work uh, to ensure that they are safe and to show that you totally represent them and you would speak on their behalf. But currently, what would you say the level of confidence the people of your community have in, in your abilities as their traditional ruler? They have 100% confidence in me because they see me that even I, I do have a sleepless night making a case for them. Even from the government side, they look at me that like, ah, this man is telling us virtually everything. I just want the total trans transformation in that community. I want the governor to see that he needs to declare a state of emergency in that community. And I don't want to see my people as if, oh, because KBC children are not in Nigeria. He left us, the abandoned us for our children to cover. So my people have the confidence in me that I'm, I'm always there for them. I'll continue to make a case for them, and I'm not going to compromise. Okay. We, we really love that last statement about, okay. you know, not compromising. Thank you very much for your time, Oba. Thank you. Me on the news. Okay. Thank you. So we'll be All shifting right. our conversation now to the International Women's Day, forging a gender equal world with a woman empowerment activist after the break.